Hi, I'm Jen Mallon. Welcome to Come Home. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, because this is gonna be such a special show. One I have so been looking forward to because I get to interview a long time friend, like pre-married days, and he was an incredible friend. My husband's best friend for 10 years. Uh, I think my husband's still grieving that he transitioned and kept on moving, but godfather to my boys and just played an integral part in our life. Now, this man of God is a producer. He is an author. He is a pastor. He is a, a movie star. He is a, um, a R&B gospel artist that's hitting all the charts, and God has just raised him up. He really leads an exemplary life about, look, if it's in you, develop it, do it. Why wait? Do it now. And we're going to talk about his book today, which is do it now. Now it's Christmas season and we get to enjoy music and we get to enjoy recipes and just wonderful things during this season. You know, we are going to talk about friendships today, relationships, the body life, community support, and one beautiful example of an incredible relationship where they supported each other is Elizabeth and Mary. You know, Mary had just been uh, learned a huge secret. God confided in her and she said yes, but she needed support. God never called her to do it alone. She ran to the safest place she could think of, to her Aunt Elizabeth, and Elizabeth embraced her. Here she was a young girl and came and poured her heart out. Elizabeth believed that she had had an angelic encounter. Elizabeth wasn't jealous uh, that Mary was a teenager, the immaculate conception, all the prophecies. And, and Elizabeth started singing, Mary, Mary, God's favor is upon you. Above all women, God has chosen you. Mary, Mary, your child is destined for the highest praise. She embraced her, she created an environment, she loved her, she supported her, and you're gonna hear all about that in today's program. But we're gonna run over and get a quick hack from Dr. G. You're gonna love this. Hey everybody, this is Dr. G with another one of my healthy hacks or biohacks for a good life. I'm also called Biohacker USA, and I'm the medical doctor at CenteredForLife.com, the holistic Christian healing ministry in St. Simons Island, Georgia. Did you know that the gut is often called the second brain? Believe it or not, we have two brains. The first brain is our central nervous system, and consists of our brain and our spinal cord. The second brain is our enteric nervous system. It consists of a series of nerves and sensory endings and cells that are in our digestive tract. This second brain is able to communicate with our first brain and sends feelings of uneasiness, discomfort, queasiness, and nausea. Even low emotional or anxiety states can be communicated by our second brain to our first brain like those butterflies that people describe. It's part of a complex feedback loop that God created in us. Within our second brain and within that digestive tract, there are cells that can produce 95% of the neurotransmitter called serotonin that we need for feelings of emotional well-being as well as for healthy bowel motility. They produce this with the help of the healthy bacteria that live there. Not only that, did you know that the gut also houses 70% of our immune system? We have collections of lymph node tissue where our fighting cells are stored. The rest of our immune system resides within other organs of our body, our blood, and our bone marrow. So, knowing these two facts, clearly, the gut is very important for us to take care of. The bacteria that live in our gut is like a garden. We call this garden in our gut the microbiome, 
This is just a fancy name for the bacterial flora that lives in harmony within us. We actually have more microbial DNA within us than we have human cellular DNA. Isn't that incredible that there are 10 times as many microbes in us than the 37 trillion human cells that are in our body? Wow, God created this balancing act. So what would you feed your garden? Would you give it good soil and fertilizer, or would you pour pesticides and chemicals on it? If we were constantly exposing our microbiome to toxins, chemicals, preservatives, antibiotics, and poor food choices, then we sicken our microbiome, and then we may inadvertently sicken ourselves. That's why it's so important to eat clean, healthy, organic, and non-preservative-laden foods whenever possible and to avoid toxic junk foods. We also don't want to feed our gut bacteria too much sugar or carbohydrates because they become overworked and then they produce irritating acid and gas. And that can be uncomfortable. So be gentle to your garden. What it wants is clean, healthy food and fiber. That's their ideal food. If they're happy, you'll be happy. Get a rich supply of probiotics, fiber, and healthy foods in your diet and ditch the processed junk and fast foods. I hope you learned something new today, and I'll see you next time on Dr. G's Health Hacks. To learn more about the microbiome and gut health, visit me at www.biohackerusa.com, and be sure to get my book, The Biohacker's Guide to the Galaxy, at amazon.com. May God bless you all. Back to the studio. Don't you love Dr. G? I mean, he's really going to get us healthy and whole before the new year. Love his stuff. Now, listen, today you are in for a treat. You're going to have a lot of fun because we just have always had a lot of fun together. Javen is not only a pastor, but he is a producer and he is an actor and he does seminars and he sings and you just never know where he's going to be next, where he's going to be living next and what he's going to do. Truly and honestly, God has called him to take the arts and entertainment mountain and he has put him in so many different places and spaces because he trusts him. And uh, he may be tired or exhausted, but when God calls him to do something, he says yes. Now, he was a godfather to my children. In fact, I think two of my children are musically gifted and inclined because he used to let them run up on the stage <laughs> That's right. after every service. And and you cultivated that. Yeah. Javen. Exactly. Okay, Zach I didn't even like, say thank you and, <laughs> and thank you for being here. Yeah, no, definitely. Zach and Josiah are still crazy. Yeah, and that amazing. was because, I mean, as soon as service was over, they were in your arms yeah. and you were letting them yeah. do all the things that, that PKs are not allowed to do, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> but because you are a PK, right. you're like, come on. Yeah, freedom, freedom in the house of God. Yeah. We love it's you important. Kids. Love your boys. So let me start. I'm super excited about your book, Do It Now. Uh, there's no better person to write it than Javen because when God says now or now, now, You've said yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's been hard. Yeah. You've yeah. had to leave it all behind time and time again when God said go. Yeah. And, you, and, and I even remember when you got counsel where people said, that's not God, that's not God. <laughs> and yet you followed, you were true to yourself, you were true to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so, so, so I'm sorry. No, you go, where did it all begin? I'll, I was just gonna <laughs> say, as you, were, as you were reading off all those different things that I now do, so people say, what do you do now? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Depends what day it is. <laughs> it depends on what day it is, right? So the reason why the career, if you want to call it that, has so much multiple uh, wings or, or, or limbs to it is because of the uh, concept of the power of now. Yeah. You know, I think in our fictitious mind, we think that life waits on us. And we think that we're going to do this first and then I'm going to do that next yeah. and whatnot. And it's like you don't, you're not given that many years right. in life. You have to seize every moment. You have to maximize every moment. And if God says turn the corner, you have to turn the corner. Or if an opportunity presents itself, like to do your own show, you can't go, oh, well, I got three children. I got <laughs> grandchildren. I can't. No, you have to go, now is my time. Yeah. I got to jump on it. Yeah. 
And you do it shaking. You do it shaking. You do it trusting but God. But you do it. Yeah, you do it. Yeah. And you've been, you really have been an expert in that. Yeah. And I want to commend you on that because not everyone's an expert in that. <laughs> and that's why your book is really important, especially for people that are at a crossroads yeah. or a transition or they're being faced with a decision. Well, I'll tell you, you know, growing up as a kid in a Christian home and, and watching my father and mother uh, not only uh, live a very integral life and, and, and you know, preach and uh, bring us all to church. My mom would always uh, say the Lord's Prayer and the Our Father's Prayer on our way to school. You're talking one of 13 kids, you know that. And, you know, being in a big station wagon and then that went to a big 15-passenger <laughs> van and we're being driven around. And they were so consistent always, no matter what season, as we're going through all these different ages and going through all these different, sometimes traumatic times. I had two brothers that were in a near-death uh, car accident, left them both in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I went through, suffered abuse myself as a kid. And when you start going through all these different things, you can either feel down, bad, or discouraged about your life, or you can step up, step on, move forward. There's a yeah. chapter in the book where I talk about understanding your beginnings. Yeah. And I say it that way because it's not about, because you can't redo your beginnings. A lot of people right. try to redo it. You mm. can't redo it. You right. can't fix your past. Mm -mm. You can't undo your past. And you can't run from your past. No. Okay? You keep moving forward. You have to keep moving forward. But you can understand it, you know. Yeah. So people say, what do you do with all that junk I've been through? Just get an understanding of what it is, yeah. and it'll help you live today in a better way. Yeah. I want you to quote in the book what your mom said to you. Uh, I think it's the only place in the book where you said you were at this crossroad and you were down and it was dark and you thought you were going to have to abandon your dream of yeah. going to college. Yeah. And her wisdom. First of all, I love your mom. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I talk great? about her all the time because you said 13 children, yeah. but she was pregnant 16, yeah. Yeah. 15, 16, 16 times. 16 times yeah. Okay. That's a warrior. That's a woman of God. Let's just take a moment and How do you honor know? her. You got a good memory. Oh, because I remember going, now that, why are wow. we putting certain <laughs> movie stars on a pedest yeah, a woman pedestal like that, right? your mom yeah. is a beast woman for without God. question without wow. question wow yeah for her to for her to even have the foresight to say let me make sure my kids know the lord's prayer and the all fathers prayer before they know nursery rhymes yeah. before they know anything else you know how amazing is that yeah. I, I i literally thought it was a a poem or something <laughs> i didn't know we were literally quoting the bible yeah. you know so much so i wrote a song on one of my albums called sunday morning oh. and in that song i talk about uh, it's, it's her favorite song, obviously, and I talk about how she, every day on our way to school, she would make us recite the Lord's Prayer. The, the quote you're speaking of is when I was 18, 17 years old, yeah. and I uh, found out I had my then-girlfriend pregnant and was bringing uh, condemnation and shame on this beloved Christian family, this integral family, and here comes the the baby boy out of the family that's getting ready to have a child out of wedlock, you know, and Although that may not seem that dramatic now, you know, in those days, that was very, very dramatic. Yeah. And that was very, I was very much rejected by the church. I, I had to stand before the church and give a huge apology. And it was very embarrassing. And, and so many people were uh, disappointed in me and they didn't mind telling me that. Mm. And I, I was obviously disappointed in myself because I always knew, and this is something that's so important. I did a show with Kathy Lee Gifford one time while I was hosting her. And she said something I never forgot. She said that you should ask your kids, what did God tell them that they're supposed to be? Yeah. You know, so many times as parents, we try to make our kids you're into right. something. But you know, the scripture says, when I formed you in your mother's womb, yeah. and I knew all of what I'm doing was going to happen. That's something, Jen. Yeah. I knew always that I was going to be in movies. I knew I was going to travel the world. I knew I was <laughs> going to be on TV. I knew I was going to do all kind of incredible stuff. And and when I knew all that, and then to find out that I was having this kid and I was working that uh, little job at Winn Dixie <laughs> making six dollars and twenty five cents an hour, now I got to be responsible for this kid. In my mind, my dream, my vision was over. I gave up on college. I gave up on ever leaving uh, South Florida. I gave up on the dream. Yeah. And, I, and you're talking about 
a, a, a serious bout of depression, yeah. a heaviness, yeah. a, a serious heaviness and a darkness, like looking through a tunnel and seeing nothing. And I'm sitting at the breakfast table uh, with my mom, and it's, it's, it's thick. You can imagine, it's thick in that house. Because yeah. my dad was upset. You know, he's the bishop. Yeah. He, he, you know, just to walk through there was just, it was, it was a nightmare, to be honest with you. And there I was, like, just, you know, trying to sneak around, didn't want to see nobody, and I just, it was at the table, and it was so quiet. I tried to get up, I would get up early to eat so I could leave, so Aww. I didn't have to see nobody. And I'm sitting at that table, man. <laughs> I could see it like yesterday. And I'm sitting at that table by myself, and my mom comes to that table, and she looks at me, and, and, and she could tell her little baby boy is down. He's, yeah. he's, he's down for the count. And she says to me, she says, uh, Javen, she looked at me, and she held, held my head up. And she said, nothing changes. Yeah. She said, nothing changes. That's all she said. She didn't explain. She didn't, she didn't go into much. She just said, nothing changes. She said, everything you are supposed to do, yeah. you're going to do it. You're going to go to college. We'll, we'll take care of this baby. We'll figure yeah. it out. But nothing changes. She doesn't know. I don't know if she ever knows to this day, but <laughs> that was the revelation in that now moment yeah. that, that released all of what you see today. It launched you. It launched me. She was saying... Do it now. Do it now. That's what she was saying to you. She was saying, <laughs> get up, move, yeah. no matter how you feel. You may not know. You may not see how. One of the things that happened in that time that was so strategic, when she said that, I applied for uh, all these different schools. I get a chance to visit Lee University Christian College in Cleveland, Tennessee. While I'm there, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. I, I know the reason why I went was because I was just trying to get away from all the embarrassment yeah, at home. Right. Cousin of mine said, hey, listen, you want to come ride with me? I'm getting ready to go to college. I was like, I'll go anywhere. Yeah, get so me out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> so I'm on the campus, and God speaks to me and said, this is where you're going to go to school. I go back home, tell mom, this is where I'm going to go. I tell dad, I'm, this is where I'm going to go. He's like, I don't have no money for that school. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm going to. Long story short, I filled out the application. I filled out the Pell Grants, the loans, student loans, all that kind of stuff. Didn't hear from nothing, didn't, but got accepted into the school. True story. I left. My dad put me on a one-way ticket to Cleveland, Tennessee. <laughs> I only had $100 that I put for the down payment to hold your room. Yeah. That's how you hold your dorm room, the right. $100. Yeah. Then you go through the process. Uh, you, you know college. Yeah. I went through the You sign up for all your classes. There I am sitting in the mountains of Tennessee. Everybody's with their parents. It's a predominantly white school. I'm, I'm probably the only black kid there. So here's this little <laughs> black boy from Florida. In the mountains. In the mountains You've of never, Tennessee. Yeah. Never, never yeah. been, you know, I mean, totally. You're an island boy. Yes, and yes. Floridian, Floridian, Caribbean blood. Multicultural, <laughs> Spanish, Jamaican culture. And I'm sitting up here in this, you know, predominantly all white southern mountains. And I'm sitting in, so you got to picture this. So everybody's with their parents and they're, and they're I'm sitting there by myself. You got to have ridiculous faith. Yeah. You got to be crazy. Yeah. I'm sitting there and everybody with their parents and, you know, their checkbooks and whatnot. And I'm signing up for all these classes, Jen. I have no money. I have not gotten approved for anything. The last person you got to see is the cashier. You got to see the yeah. person to pay. And the lady says, she, the lady said to me, how are you going to pay for this? You know, I looked that lady in the face and said, my father is going to pay. She thought, she thought I was talking Your about natural my father. She said, well, where is he? I said, well, it's coming. I said, it's coming. <laughs> that lady said to me, you got 45 days Oof. to pay for the, you know, if you don't pay, we have to send you back home. We have to. I said, that's all I need. For 45 days, I went to the financial aid office. You ever see the color purple where Silly went yes. to the mailbox and say, anything come for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day, man. Once classes were over, how are my Pell Grants? Anything? Did I get approved for anything? Did wow. I get approved? So much so till one day when I find, probably like the 44th day. God is so good. <laughs> of course. 44th day, I go in there. Everybody's standing up there clapping their chair. I go, what's going on? Come to find out, there were so many people that didn't collect their scholarships, that didn't show up for their pay or grants, that didn't show up for extra money. And because I had come to that place every day, they knew me by name. They said, Mr. Campbell, we're going to give you all this money to pay for my first <laughs> I walk out, Tenacity, man. persistence. Show up. I talk yeah. about that in the book. Yeah. You've got to show up. Yeah. I say opportunities are not lost. Somebody else just takes right. them. You've got, sometimes you may not feel like it, but if you just get there, yeah. get back in church, get back yeah. in the flow of things, take the meeting, right. answer the phone. You get know in what I'm the saying? word. Get it, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you'll get, four years later, I walked across the stage. I was one of the speakers at my graduation and the rest is history. Yeah. Now moments. Yeah. And you know what? That 
taught you how to walk by faith. Yes. Because how many other times, it was like the Holy Spirit was training you at 17. <laughs> yeah. And then how many other times did he say, over and over Walk again. Walk away from it all. Over and over again. And you know that. You know, I left Tampa some 20-something years ago and literally packed whatever I could. Made no sense. You, made no you, sense. Ten years. You, you, yeah. we, we had a team. We put things on the map. We made yeah. things happen. We were something? all young and dumb and <laughs> green and naive and loved Jesus. And yeah. And, and, and while things were at its height. Right. I it was got, good. He walk, told you to walk away from something walk, good. Walk away from something good. Packed whatever I could. Put my little, uh, had a little BMW at that time. <laughs> but put it on the back of the trailer. This is before Wi-Fi. This is before, yeah. you know, you know GPS. GPS. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, that, that's crazy. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, man, when God says do it now, you got to do it yeah. now. And you've got to learn to have that type of tenacity, that, that, that type of faith. I literally... Uh, looked up different Holiday Inns along my journey. Had never been out west before in my life. Here I was driving from Tampa through New, uh, Lu uh, Louisiana, yeah. through Texas, you know, just driving over. And I get over to Los Angeles, California. I park the truck in a parking lot with the tr uh, car attached to the back of it. I'm living in the Holiday Inn <laughs> for two weeks on Ventura Boulevard in <laughs> Studio City with faith, a dream, yeah. and excited about a new beginning. Yeah. You have to learn how to turn the corner. Yeah. It's very big. I talk about this very big in the book. Yeah. One of the things about the power of now is you've got to learn how to release yeah. at a moment's notice. Holding on is going to get you in trouble. Yeah. You have to, what we call pivot. Yes. You have to be willing because life does not, I don't care how you want. One of the reasons why some of us are in trouble is we're still trying to stay in control. Right. You've never been in control. I talk about right. it in the book. Yep. Control is an illusion. <laughs> right. You know, God is in control. You're not. Yeah. You know, and you just need to take your hands off and when he says turn turn i don't care how good or bad it looks yeah. you have to be willing to move and when you do that doors after doors after yeah. doors will open for you yeah they do and listen you because you've done it you you have been a life coach to celebrities god has put you with all these people That's something and then your light gets to go shine yeah Otherwise, yeah. you, you have been a living epistle read by all men. Amen. And God has put you, you know, undercover in the greatest <laughs> places and spaces. I remember when the boys were so proud when you were on One Night with the King. They would always fast forward it to your part, and then they would rewind it. I think we broke like a VHS and yeah. a DVD and because they were so proud. Oh. And, you know, in their little minds, they just didn't um, understand how, but mommy, I thought he was singing and he was a pastor and he, <laughs> and he led, you know, the young adults and he did this and, and now he's, uh, and, but you shifted. Yeah. And I, and this book is so powerful because you walk through, you, you give a step-by-step -step comprehensive journey. Yeah. Now, before we talk anymore, I do want to do a roll in real quick okay, yeah. because I want people to see you in action. <laughs> um, <laughs> you uh, yeah, I've seen stuff. you, but let, let's just run to this roll in <laughs> okay. and see Javen doing some of his stuff in the now. Up your hands, let's go, let's go. Say, oh, I thank him for a healer. Hey, say, oh, one last time, victory. Let's go, everybody. Say, oh, oh. church. I'm just about done. In Genesis, he's the creator. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. In Nehemiah, he was one who restores what is broken. In Psalms, he's the songs in the morning and in the night. In Song of Solomon, he's the author of Faithful Love. In Daniel, he's the stranger in the fire with us. In Micah, he casts out our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. In Malachi, he's the son of righteousness who brings healing. In 1 Thessalonians, he's our comfort in the last days. In Hebrews, he is our high priest. James, he's our mature in our faith. In 1 John, he's the source of fellowship. In 2 John, he's God in the flesh. In 3 John, he's the source of all truth. In Jude, he's the protector of us when we stumble. And in Revelations, he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. I got the nerve to bring this prick over here. I didn't know you were coming home like this. What you mean like this? The last thing I need is my wife running around with some Twinkie Dick dipstick. When you gonna grow up? Do you realize I am done? I am done, do you realize that? Breathe in. Out. How is it, Doc? It's 
It's 160 over 100. You still taking the medication? Every day. What about work? What about it? I don't know, Rich. Something like this takes time. You, you don't want to rush it. Heaven forbid. I'm going to increase the dosage, though. OK, thanks. But I really need you to take it easy, man. <laughs> Whatever you say, Doc. All right. See you on Thursday. Wouldn't miss it. All right. Take care. So those are just a couple little <laughs> uh, personalities of Javen, but really- That's why the, I'm so tired, right? I know, right, that's all right. That's what coffee's for, right? <laughs> exactly, keep going. Uh, but that's, in, in, in Do It Now, you really lay out, um, you, you eliminate all excuses. It's yeah. like every chapter, you're eliminating excuses of why someone can't embrace their God path. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah really I like powerful. that, that's a good way to say that. You know, one of the things we talk about in the book is a chapter called Getting Unstuck, Yeah. right? Because there's always this will, there's always this desire or this pull to just sit, yeah. to just wait. I'm waiting on God, yeah. you know? And it's always this opportunity. And the reality is waiting is really not waiting, sitting, it's serving, right? Yeah. So whatever your hands, I remember, you know, coming uh, uh, to the church back in the day and at that time desiring to be a recording artist and going into studios yeah. and God was like, no, I need you to build a choir. And I you need did. you to, you know, with these non-singing people. <laughs> in a tent. <laughs> the tent. You know, no AC. Middle of nothing, you know. <laughs> and so, and when you learn how to embrace yeah. your now, it then creates, Jen, your next. The word now literally means new, yeah. okay? So anytime you say do it now, what you're saying is do it new. When, he, when Jesus said, behold, you know, now is the time, yeah. you know, when the true worshipers, he was saying there is a new thing that's going on. The scripture says now faith is. Yeah. Faith new. Faith yeah. is new. Faith is. is next. So now means new. It means next. The other thing that now means, it means eternal. You're never going to be in your past. You're never going to be in your future. You'll always be in your now. Yeah, I love that. So we just have like one or two minutes left. Mm -hmm. I want you to minister because we could do 10 shows. But yeah, we they could. need to get you your book. You should yeah. book me for a couple <laughs> I know. more shows. You have to come back. But I we're getting will. ready to go into a new year. So Amen. just minister. Hey, folks, wherever you are, first off, we want to say Merry Christmas to you and your family. We want you to know that this is a season to rejoice for the Savior has come. I want you to understand that God loves you so much that his grace is so sufficient. Jesus was born to die. They brought him gold, myrrh, and frankincense. One of those gifts represents a burial, what you would uh, uh, perfume a dead body with so it doesn't smell. It's a very unusual gift to give to a brand new baby, but they knew his purpose. They knew he was born to die, to give you grace and mercy. God's grace is for you. We love you. God bless you. Be encouraged. Yay. Thank you, Javen. You got to come back, okay? Please. I'd love you. to. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jen Mallon. Get the book. Come home. Get the book. <laughs> Christmas presents, stocking stuffers. Yes. Come home. Yes.